Jr. here to give opening comments. Errol, he's joined by his trainer, Derek James. Hello, how's it going? Um, you know, a little off night. Um, the better man won tonight, not here to make any excuses. I uh, definitely did the same. Um, just, you know, my time was off and uh, I can capitalize on a couple of things and, um, you know, his time was a lot better than mine tonight. Turn it over to the media for questions for Errol Spence Jr. Raise your hand yep. and wait until you get the microphone. Right back here. Hey, Errol. Andreas here from the Sporting News. Errol, how was the weight cut for this fight? And I wanted to follow that with the second question. If the rematch had to be at 47, I know you said you want to be there again. Are you willing to do this rematch back at Welterweight? Um, <clears throat> something I got to talk to my management about, but um, hopefully it's at uh, 154. How was this particular weight cut? Was it a very difficult one, or did you feel at ease with the weight cut? I mean, it's always difficult, but, um, you know, like I said, I don't make any excuses. The better man won tonight. One last question. What about Terrence surprised you the most? Was it his timing, his power? What surprised you? Uh, nothing really surprised me. Um, he was just like I thought. It just, um, my timing wasn't, wasn't good today. Questions for Errol Spence Jr. Hey, Errol, uh, Keith Heideck from BoxingScene.com. What, what do you attribute your timing not being there to? Did you feel off physically or anything, or what was wrong in the fight? Yeah, I uh, felt a little off physically, but most times I get, I get through it. So, you know, I thought it was going to be just like the other times, but, um, you know, I couldn't kick it up a notch. Errol, Sam Gordon here with the Las Vegas Review Journal. Um, how would you contextualize or describe Terrence's power, and when did you really get a feel for it for the first time tonight? Um, I got a feel for his power probably like first, second round. Um, you know, he's a strong dude, but, you know, everybody at this top level have some type of power. But um, I think because <clears throat> my time was out, he was catching me in between shots. Errol, uh, Kevin Ioli from Yahoo Sports. My question would be, your face was swelling up really badly. Were you having difficulty seeing as the fight progressed? Oh, uh, no. No, I wasn't having difficulty seeing at all. I'm, I'm sorry. I said no, I, I didn't have difficulty seeing at all. Okay. And then lastly, did you feel when the fight started, like did you feel good or did you feel like it was you know, maybe one of those nights? Um, I feel cool. I thought, you know, I, I could um, definitely do enough to uh, to win the fight, but I feel good. And like I said, I'm not here to, to make any excuses. I'm a grown man. Um, I decided to agree to the weight and get down to it, and that's what I did. So, take no, no excuses. Hats off to the champion tonight. Right. Errol, straight back. Dan Raphael from Big Fight Weekend. I wanted to know... Uh, I know it's only a few minutes removed from the end of the fight. How do you think you're going to deal with this going forward tomorrow, next week? Are you the kind of guy that's going to just bad night, shake it off, and all is good? Or are you going to, you know, stew over this for a while and it's going to hurt bad? <laughs> uh, nah, I'm not going to stew over it at all. Um, I did out what I was um, supposed to do regardless of, you know, the outcome or anything like that. Like I said, I was going to do something, and I promised everybody I was going to do it. So I did it as a man. I stood up on my words. So I'm definitely not going to uh, soak over this. I'm going to get right back and uh, get to it, hopefully at uh, 154 pounds. And, uh, Errol, even though, I mean, we know how big of a fight this was. Everybody talked about the historical significance of this fight all through the buildup, all for the last several years as we waited for it to happen. I wonder if it's happened, you go on the losing side of this one. Can you Can you... Does it at least give you some solace to know that you gave the boxing public something that they had wanted for so long, even though obviously it didn't go your way? Uh, definitely, definitely. It was exciting, the whole build up to it and leading up to it too. So it's something that you know I wouldn't I wouldn't change for nothing, and um, I'm definitely open to the to the rematch, and uh, hopefully it'll be at 154 pounds. Yeah.
Thanks a lot, guys. Morgan Campbell from the New York Times. This question is for Derek or for Errol. Um, once Bud won a couple rounds and he started to get the momentum, what types of tactical adjustments did you guys want to be able to make? So um, just really kind of like do our best to take away what he was doing instead of kind of standing in front of him. But I think that Errol, like you can notice, well, I can notice his time was very, off really bad and he was standing in front of him. So I think that um, that's kind of was the thing, was just the timing. Reaction time was a little slower. But it's okay, it's like life, and you come back, you deal with it, and you get better. Hi, Errol. Dan Matthews from the Daily Mail. I, ju I just wondered what you saw in the performance tonight that gives you confidence that in a rematch at 154 pounds, that the result would be any different. Who are you talking to? Errol. Say it again. I just wondered what aspects of the performance tonight give you confidence that you could change the result even at 154? Because um, <clears throat> I know I'm, I'm a lot better than uh, what I showed tonight. And um, I know that a lot of things was off with me. And uh, even though Terrence probably did what he was supposed to, he was sharp and he was on point, and he made sure he was 100% ready in his fight. Andrew Jones, ESPN and Anscape. But first for Errol, I want to ask you, what did Derrick James say to you in terms of supporting you after the fight and how loyal he's been to you? And is this officially your last fight at 147 in your mind? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, in my mind, it, it's my last fight at 147 pounds, so you know, hopefully the next one be at 154. But um, Derek, you know, just t just told me that you know keep my head up. You know, I was off and um, you know trying to co console me like he's supposed to. And Derek, just in terms of you consoling him and how you feel about this, what's been going to be your process over the next few days to be able to? move on, and then just go back to the drawing board on it? Well, you know, I think that in watching it, I had time to uh, understand what was going on. From the first, second round, I kind of saw what was happening, and you kind of like understand, okay, maybe eventually, maybe you can catch another good shot, maybe you can um, recover, but it didn't work that way, and it's okay. I mean, it's life, unfortunate, this is, this is what happens in big time boxing. Somebody was gonna have to be in this situation. Unfortunately, it was us. And we'll um, got to move on. I mean, I have to, I had to fly to London tomorrow. So, you know, I can, I'm gonna I'm hold on this for a long time. May not ever get over it till after we revenge it. But it's just what it is. I mean, you know, it's life and you just gotta keep it moving. You gotta deal with it, embrace it, and move on. Got two more questions for Errol Spence Jr. Two more. Marcus Hayes, Fight Hub TV. This question is for Derek James first. Coach Derek, I want to ask you, we haven't seen Errol take as much punishment as he did tonight. Was there ever a point where you thought about stepping in and stopping the bout? I really, I just wanted to make sure he was okay, right? I didn't, I did, I saw him get hit with the big shot, but I think that, you can see for me, I see his legs a little off, but I really, I, I really wasn't, but then you think about it, I'm, the doctor's right there with me and we're talking back and forth, and they're looking at him, and I'm looking at the doctors and we're talking, so it's like, um, you know, not really, but you just never know. And Errol, we saw you go down a couple of times. When you felt Terrence's power, particularly in the second knockdown, when you got up, what was going through your mind at that time? Shit, um, just fight back. I mean, <laughs> I mean, what you mean was going through my mind at the time. It's, it's a boxing match, so, you know, I was trying to, Block the shots he was throwing and come back with shots, but I mean nothing really was going through my mind. It was just you know the same stuff. 
Last question. Cameron Buford, LA News Observer. Um, Earl Spence, would you talk to talk to us about what Terrence Crawford said to you after the fight? I usually ask him that, uh, but um, he just said a uh, good fight. Um, you know, much respect, and that's about it. All right, we will allow Errol Spence Jr. to depart. And you know what? Tonight we saw the two best welterweights on the planet colliding. And I give respect to both men because they went ahead and put it all on the line. A round of applause to both Terrence Bud Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. for providing us an unbelievable night of boxing here in Las Vegas. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now I want to bring up, he is the first male boxer to be undisputed champion in a two divisions for the first time in the four belt era. There is an undisputed welterweight champion of the world. This man of 40 wins, no losses. He remains undefeated here tonight. The best pound for pound fighter in the world Ladies and gentlemen from Omaha, Nebraska, we present to you Terrence Bud Crawford, ladies and gentlemen. Terrence, as we are literally moments removed from your mesmerizing performance, uh, what does this mean for you? I mean.